um, <clears throat> investment fund and the New York E Collaborative for putting this together. We've been involved with this the past six years, so this has been a tremendous uh, opportunity for us to meet a lot of startup companies, mentor companies, and it's uh, worked out very nicely for, for Montefiore. So I'm going to ask everybody here, if I had <clears throat> a 30% chance of winning something in this hand, and I have a 65% chance of winning something in this hand, how many of you would select the 30%? Have a raise of hands? Nobody. And this is why this solution is so beneficial. Sp Spring <coughs> is a company that has an antidepressant assessment tool. Through 25 questions, think about this, through 25 questions for a PCP who's scared to, in many cases, to prescribe an antidepressant, you're giving them, through this tool, a 65% chance of succeeding versus picking an antidepressant on their own of only 30%. I think that's rather compelling, especially when you look at the team, and you look at April and her team from Yale that have worked with Dr. John Crystal, who is the chief of psychiatry at Yale. They've already published in JAMA a number of articles and studies, and on top of that, this is a company that's only been around since last May. So when we were very, very intrigued, and we're now having conversations with our medical group and our, and our department of psychiatry on how we might be able to work with this tool in helping primarily our PCPs in the area of, of prescribing antidepressants. This is a team that has experience in fundraising. It's a team that is very agile, very, very easy to work with. It's been a pleasure to work with their, with their management team. And we must have had at least four or five conversations and meetings with them, with our, with, our, with our physicians, and we're looking forward to seeing how we can move forward and doing a pilot. With that, I'd like to introduce April Coe, who is the co-founder of Spring. Thanks so much, Steve. So I'm gonna get started on a really cheerful note, and I'm gonna be talking about depression. <laughs> so chances are, you personally know someone who struggles with depression, but that person might even be you. One in five Americans struggles with depression, and this is a debilitating illness that costs $210 billion in the US every year, and 15% of severe depression ends in suicide. Really cheerful note. Um, so one in 10 Americans take antidepressants to treat their depression, but most patients don't get better from their first antidepressant. And this is because clinicians are forced to resort to a long process of trial and error when prescribing these drugs. And so what this means is that patients take drug after drug after drug until they finally find one that works for them. And as you might imagine, this process is very long and very, very difficult for patients to endure. Not to mention incredibly, incredibly expensive. So $95 billion is spent in the US every year on treating depression. And depression is especially expensive as a comorbid condition. And of that, $57 billion is estimated to be preventable if we could just find a way to eliminate this inefficient trial and error process of treating depression. And so we've developed a solution that could potentially recover 27 billion of those preventable costs. And let me tell you how. So we've demonstrated that machine learning, an advanced method of data analysis, can predict treatment outcomes in depression. So our technology was developed at Yale University by Yale psychiatrists and data scientists. And our group has now published a body of research, including a paper published in The Lancet, as well as JAMA Psychiatry. And my co-founder and chief scientist, Adam, described in these papers how he used the largest ever clinical trial done on depression to develop the first ever machine learning algorithm that is able to predict whether a specific antidepressant would work for any given patient. And then what he did was he validated this model on a completely independent data set to make sure that this model was generalizable. And so what's extraordinary about what he did is that 
he found that his model not only outperformed more expensive genetic and biological precision medicine alternatives, but he also found that his model improved the clinical accuracy of the average clinician by 40%. And using Spring, patients were two times more likely to get better. And so we took the key predictors of this powerful machine learning algorithm to design a questionnaire for use in a clinical setting. And this questionnaire just takes just 10 minutes to complete. And so we're bringing this technology to where it's needed most, in primary care. And not a lot of people know this, but primary care is actually where 79% of all antidepressants are prescribed. And so here, let me lead you through how this works in primary care. So let's take a typical patient, and let's call her Amanda. And let's say Amanda arrives in the waiting room of her primary care doctor's office, and in the waiting room receives a tablet, like you see there. And on the tablet, she's, she's screened for depression using a digitized PHQ-9. And if she screens positive for depression, and only if she screens positive for depression, then our proprietary spring assessment is automatically triggered and collects additional information on Amanda and her, her condition. And then a personalized report is compiled and sent directly to her primary care doctor via the EHR. And uh, the clinician goes over the report with her, confirms that Amanda is indeed depressed, and using our recommendations, is able to efficiently and confidently initiate treatment for Amanda's depression. And so our recommendations take into consideration side effect, efficacy, drug interactions, and patient preferences, all through the information that we were able to collect on, Aman on Amanda in the waiting room. <coughs> and then Amanda goes home and tracks her progress weekly via her mobile phone uh, through our patient portal. And instead of enjoying this long process of trial and error with experimenting with a number of drugs, she gets better from the very beginning through our recommended treatment. This framework, which includes efficient screening, machine learning clinical decision support, and automated outcomes reporting, is called SPRINT. And even though we're starting uh, this framework within primary care, uh, this framework can be adapted to be used in a variety of clinical settings. And so this framework offers three main benefits for providers. Oops, sorry. The first is that we're able to minimize patient suffering by reducing the average amount of time that a patient spends with depression. <laughs> and by getting healthier patients faster, we're able to save about $750 uh, per patient on medical costs. The second main benefit is that we improve important quality measures, like the PHQ-9 utilization rates, which then leads to increased revenues for health systems through things like MACRA and DISRA. And third is we streamline clinical processes, make clinicians' lives easier, and enable them to be the best doctors that they could possibly be. And so, uh, as Steve said, uh, we got started just this past May, so we've only been around for, for half a year. But just in this short period of time, we've been able to make incredible progress. And we already have a number of large providers working with us, including SBH, which was introduced to us through uh, this accelerator. And behind Spring, uh, there's an excellent and passionate team. We're a group of three technical co-founders from Yale. I've experienced raising $5 million for my first venture, which I started as just an undergrad. Uh, Adam, our chief scientist, has two degrees from Oxford and is currently pursuing his PhD at Yale. Uh, BRCTO has experience working as a software engineer at Google, as well as a uh, healthcare startup patient bank. And we just added a chief medical officer to the team um, now that we've raised $1.3 million in seed financing. Now that we're funded, we're in the process of quickly expanding our team. And I think very importantly, we have some of the leading psychiatrists some of the most well-respected psychiatrists backing our work today, uh, including Chief and Chair of Psychiatry at Yale New Haven, Dr. John Crystal. And so even though we know that depression in itself is a huge, massive problem, we're quickly expanding our machine learning predictive analytics into other mental illnesses, and maybe even beyond that, starting with depression and psychosis. Our goal is to start to change the standard of care for behavioral health and en en enable doctors to make personalized, data-driven decisions for their patients. <laughs> Welcome to Spring, everybody. Thank you.